What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of the agency's HBCU Creatives. I am here with Rose Boy Forth. I am so excited to do this interview today. First and foremost, how are you? How have you just been holding up? Um, I'm good. You know, just trying to um take every day, you know, for what it is, you know, putting my best foot forward every day, you know, trying to just always outdo myself for real, for real. For How sure. And that's something that I see that is clearly evident. I actually saw footage of you um, performing at Winston's homecoming. And I was like, this boy is it. Like, I'm so excited to even do this interview. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely done, they definitely done showed me love out there in Winston. Like, shout out to DP and shout out to TM, you know, Trails. They, Aaron, you know, from Juice Crew, they definitely done presented me with some great opportunities. For sure. So to start this interview off, I want to start with the very beginning. So tell us how you got your start in music. Um, It's crazy. I always had a little niche for music. Um, I like, I remember being like eight trying to write around. And it, it was like, I was young, so my brain wasn't developed. And then I kind of came back around like late high school and was recording with my godmother's son, like in the basement, you know, recording myself even a little bit. And then I fell off again. Then when I got to school, um, I was in college, um, like my freshman year, me and the baby's uh, DJ, DJ Kid, we did the Nice For What remix. And it started gaining buzz and, you know, that kind of sparked a, a fire in me. But then I started hosting and DJing. So for like two or three years, I took another break. But then I picked it back up in 2019. And it's like, I don't see myself putting it down like no time soon. I don't see me slowing up. Like I done been 100% serious, invested financially, mentally, um, just in music. So I just see me put my best foot forward now. So I would say 2019, I've been doing it like officially and like professionally, like being serious about it. Beautiful. So from eight till now, wow. Like that's a long timeline for you to have yeah. not gave it up. That's amazing. Yeah. I love hearing things like that. I ain't that. been able to get away from it. Like I haven't just said I'm not doing music no more. Like I'm here I am 2021. So Yep. But for sure on the gas, who are some of your, you know, your musical inspirations, whether it be you at eight or you now? Um, It's crazy because like with me, I don't have like your typical music influences. Like when I was growing up, I was listening to like California. I was listening to like California people. Um, I listened to like Dom Kennedy. I was listening to Nipsey like way back then. Um, Wiz Khalifa. Um, hold on. Who else? uh like that's who I listen to but far as influence like whose style I've kind of emulated and kind of took and made it my own um I definitely studied K Camp um just you know like the the R&B singing vibes with like that little bop to it like you know what I'm saying like bringing that bop to R&B um who else I would really say him for the most part I listen to like a bunch of melodic rappers to kind of work on my melody and you know figure out like cadences and things like that but I would probably say K Camp is like the 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 my guru he would be my guru beautiful yeah. so you kind of pulling inspiration from everywhere I pull inspiration from everywhere like I got a single called Row um that was inspired by Young Thug. Like, I took that and made it my style, made it, like, to where it was fitting for Rose Boy, you know? I took Ski and made it in a row. So it's like, it's about taking what's in front of you and innovating it and making it yours, you know what I mean? Well, not really yours, but making it to where it fit for you and your audience. I was actually going to ask you about Rose a little bit later, so I'm going to save that <laughs> for later because it <laughs> wouldn't be an interview if we didn't talk about that single. But yeah. I want to go... Back just a little bit more to when you was at AT, because that's my university as well, AT Pride. Um, yeah. what were some of the things you were involved with in school? And tell us how you found your balance. Um, I was involved in well, I'm a member of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. I'm a spring 17 initiate into the Musa chapter of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I was Mr. Bombshell at um AT. Shout out to my bombshells. Um what else? Um, I was uh, the event host. Um, I was blessed to work with, you know, Grady, 
Um, I came up with the idea of Club Corbett, which is like a popular thing at AT now. Um, Grady kind of put me in that position, you know, to come up with that. So that was a great thing. Um, that's really about it that I can think of off top, like Musa, um, Mega Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated, event host, and like bombshell for the most part. I was just like a known guy around campus. Like I was just like, you know, the cool guy that everybody kind of gravitated towards. Beautiful. So how did you find your balance doing all of that, being a student, you know, dipping and dabbling in entertainment, whether it be hosting or, you know, just being on stage? Um, like, it just kind of naturally worked out for me. I, I kind of went with the flow. I, I didn't have, like, no set particular plan. I just kind of engaged in the things that was presented in front of me. So if I wasn't hosting, I was doing my schoolwork. If I wasn't doing my schoolwork, I was working on like stuff as the mister. So it's kind of like taking everything and just making it a natural balance. Like the system kind of created itself by me being involved in different things. Like it kind of just shifted my focus. You know what I mean? To the point where I was like, I was constantly doing, like I didn't really have much idle time. When I did have idle time, I did, you know what normal college students do, like go hang at the lounge and stuff like that, like the student center. Definitely. So back into the music, I want to start with, you know, the Something for the Road EP because I love it. It just seems like to me, it's just with you and the booth just delivering and the beats. They were all so smooth. Like, I kind of hear like the melodic thing that you was referring to earlier. So tell me a little bit about your creative process. Um, The way that Roe had happened, I'm going to start with Roe, then just go into the creative process as a whole. Roe was an accident. Like, it's crazy. Like, Roe, I did not plan to make Roe. Um, I had previously had a hit called Slide Out, and my DP called me and was like, you got Slide Out. It's a hit, but you need another song. And he was like, I need you to go with, like, that pop melody sound because it's a, it's a common sound. And he sent me a bunch of songs. Like, he sent me, like, Young Thug Ski, The Baby's uh, Masterpiece. He was like, you need to make something similar to these. He was like, because this is that popular sound. So I was going to go make a whole nother song, like a pop melody song, but it wasn't, it's actually about to drop on my project and I still ended up making it. But I got right at the front door of my studio and I listened to Roll. I was going through my email. I was like, hold on, let me just check all these beats one more time just to make sure it ain't nothing else in here. I looked over and I heard it. As soon as I heard the beat, the first line I said was, she gonna say like a vote. And then I said, that's it. Soon as like soon as soon as I hit that note, I was like, she gonna sell like a vote. It was like I said, load this up. I didn't write row. I didn't have it figured out. I went in there last minute and just had fun. And it was the funnest song I ever made. Like I, this is all everything I love. I looked my engineer in the eye and I was like, this is the most fun. Row was the most fun I ever had making a song. It didn't feel like I had to make a song. I was just being expressive, like being my happy, natural self. You feel me? Like if anybody knows me, they know like I'm real bouncy. So it's kind of, it's literally my personality for real, for real, Row is. Beautiful. So um, that's crazy that you brought that up, that it being a fun song, because you definitely do get the fun vibe from that song. So tell us how the challenge came about, because the challenge, I've been seeing it everywhere. Before this, we kind of talk about Janika. She put her makeup spin on it. How did the yeah. challenge come about? Um, the challenge really came about because, like, as we listened to the song, we was like, this is a TikTok song. We was like, we need to kind of break this on TikTok. So I was like, man, I definitely agree. And I still don't feel like it's all the way broke on TikTok the way it's supposed to do. Like, I had a couple of videos do, like, numbers. Just like, I'm like, dang, you know what I'm saying? But like, I don't think it's really broke. But I think once that real big influencer get a hold of it, like, it's a rap for Ro. Like, Ro ain't even reached its fullest potential, but it's still a great song. Like, it's done past my first hit, dang near, um, for its streams. That's how I know it's a great song. You know what I mean? So, like, that's really how it got going. Like, we was just like, this is a TikTok song, so let's let's put it where it need to be and, you know, kind of put that challenge out there. So if anybody see this interview, you know, get on that road challenge, you know. We, we got it going for $300. We're going to wait till the challenge really get going till we decide a winner like we don't want to just have like three people do it you know what i'm saying or like oh, for sure be like 10 people do it like no nah, we want the whole world doing it so then we can hand out like get the money's worth you know what i mean get my money yes. i'm gonna give away 300 i got it got a count you feel me yeah 
For sure. I'm going to go ahead and put my entry in here after this interview. Right. So look out for it. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So you kind of like are a hit. I don't know if you know, but like, that is like a song of the summer. Were you thinking about summer when you recorded this record? Um, no, but yeah, because like I just made the song because I just wanted to make it. Like it was like I said, it was last minute. But I was like, this can literally be the song of the summer. Like with the right push, like I still feel like it's so much that need to be done just because I'm hard on myself. Like I don't get comfortable. I'm not content. Like, once that song catch on, like, that's going to be that song that reminds you of the first summer after the pandemic. Like, it's going to take you back to an era. And that's what I want the song to do. That's why, I, like, I'm really trying to get the right push behind it. You know what I mean? That's a good vibe. So, for anybody watching this interview, you definitely go stream Row right mm. after into this because I yeah. love the song. It's a vibe. Mm. It really is a vibe. It's perfect for summer, like we just said. <laughs> It's the best song of the summer, man. It's just the world got to catch on to it first. You know how that go. Yes. It's going to take some time, but when it's up, it's up. I'm ready. Yeah. Duh. So can we expect a visual for this song, if you can yeah. tell us? Yeah, like most definitely. Like me, I'm a creative, so like I really think my ideas out. Like I don't like to just up and do it. Like I don't like to just run with the idea, you know. And that sometimes can be like my hindrance. But like, if I'm gonna do something, I wanna. I'm big on execution, so I wanted to make sense. Like when y'all get that road video, I want y'all to be like, "This is what we waited for." Like, I love this. Like, I didn't mind if 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 we had to wait, and this is what you giving us. I don't mind waiting every time. You know what I'm saying? So definitely can expect a road a road visual, most definitely. Yes, I'm excited for sure. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited. <laughs> We definitely ready. We ready for yeah. sure. Um, being that you are from, you're from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So who are some of your, you know, your dream collabs within the state or overall? Um, I mean, number one is the baby. Cause like I took a lot of his, his process. I took his, his blueprint and just applied it to myself, like being hands-on, um, hitting the ground running, you know, doing the groundwork and just using my personality to connect with people and market myself. Like, I'm a I'm a walking bundle of joy. Like if anybody know me, they know like you get in Shaq presence, like he's gonna make you laugh. He play too much. He he a clown. You feel me? So I want to take that and share that with the world, like and create that happiness. Like I want to create that happiness. So definitely working with the baby, like that's number one. Um, so to be honest, oh and Tusi, like I like to work with, and it's not because they both. Hot. Like, I could become the biggest thing tomorrow. Like, I could be the hottest thing in the yeah. world tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to want to work with them, not just because. It's just like, no, nah, like, it just makes sense for the Carolinas. Like, I make lover boy music, so me and Tusi can make, like, that R&B joint. And then me and, like, I really want the baby on Slide Out Remix. Like, I'm manifesting that. Like, he going to hop on that Slide Out Remix. Uh, yeah, for sure. I hope he does, because I love that song, too. Yeah. I'm manifesting that. Like, I want him on Slide Out Remix. Like, it, it just makes sense. It make perfect sense. That will be fire. Wow. I'm speaking it up. Since you brought it up, I'm going to go ahead and We're speak gonna, it up. I'm putting it into the atmosphere. It's, it's going to return back to us. We just okay. don't know. It's going to return back to us for sure. So, hmm. As an artist, what would you say for an uh, aspiring musician, you know, somebody that's just starting out, maybe it's a college student, what advice do you have? Stay true, stay humble, and stay hungry. Stay true to yourself. You know, don't, don't conform to what the world wants. If you're not out here hitting licks, selling drugs, don't rap about that. You know what I'm saying? That, that's just, that's, that's stay, that's stay true. Stay hungry. Like, you got to wake up every day. You got to realize that Rome wasn't built in one day. And that's anything. Anything that you want to manifest is not going to come easy. Because if it was easy, everybody would do it. You got to wake up every day, like, with this chip on your shoulder. No matter how hard life hits you, you got to wake up so determined and so dedicated and look within and know that that thing is coming. Knowing, like, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that it's going to work. Like, you gotta have you gotta have faith so big that people think you crazy. Like your your faith your faith gotta be so big that people you wake up every day and you be like, 
this man out here passing out flyers like this is a different type of dedication like i don't went around greensboro and put flyers up on every gas at every gas station just because i'm net dedicated so that's part of staying hungry and then just staying humble like knowing that you're not responsible for your your own success you know what i'm saying knowing that the man above is giving you favor knowing that the people around you is making things shake for you you know it's not just you you know you're just the talent in the face but talent only gets you so far you know what i mean like it, you need those people number one you need god then you need the people that he sent to help you bring the vision to fruition so just staying humble and not taking too much credit for yourself and just making the people around you feel appreciated so they work hard that's so beautiful wow yeah. Yeah. If anything, y'all better walk away from this interview inspired and ready to stream, bro, and manifesting yeah. the baby on a slide out feature. That's the big three. Slide out, take it to the crib, slide out. But no, nah, I love this song. You know, like you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta create what you want. Like wake up every day painting your canvas. You know what I'm saying? You gotta paint your canvas to what you want it to be. Don't wait for nobody to give you nothing. You go out and take what you know that's already in you and what God, what vision God has given you. You know what I'm saying? And trust his plan. He gave us the vision. He didn't give us a plan. We got to trust his plan. So. Oh, you're for sure very stand up. Okay. You're definitely a stand up guy. This is from like the eight year old boy to college to now. Wow. This advice is beautiful. Yeah. Like character, character got to stay consistent. That's something. Like, like I said, everybody that know me knows, like, it ain't a facade, like, anybody, like, you know, I, I'm I'm human, I have my flaws, but for the most part, like, I, I want to do right by everybody, you know what I'm saying? I don't always get done right by, but I try to do right by everybody, and I try to help everybody. I don't believe in withholding nothing, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Each one, each one teach one. Oh, I love that. So, yeah. this question i don't know if you thought this far yet but typically when i ask the artist this question it takes them time to think so what is your top five rose boy for a song like which five define you as an artist that you can say you've already recorded or you know what i'm saying if you want to foreshadow us into what you have coming next what are your top five um slide out because that's my first hit first hit that ever made the radio row because it exposed my personality to the world and people just gravitated towards it. And it was the second song that ever hit the radio. Um, I got a song called Black Boy Diary. That probably won't release till like winter time because it's so authentic and so real and so powerful as far as emotion. I want people to be still and in the house hearing that. Um, Black Boy Diary. Black Boy Diary Part 2 because it's a sequel to how I feel. And then I would say Why Don't You Say? And that's coming like real real soon like next month soon like a couple weeks soon so why don't you say it's like a real powerful song too so but it's a vibe it's a vibe and it's powerful so i got a lot of good stuff to i got a whole lot to look forward to. oh man i got a call <laughs> I'm, i got a call but yeah i got a you got like it's a whole lot on the way whole lot I'm excited. We're all excited. So overall, what we can expect from you, yes, is, you know, some new music. Um, you know what? Because it's like, if you watch this interview, you deserve this information. Uh, I'm dropping two projects July 4th. So it's like, you tuned in, you deserve this information. So like, I'm dropping a, a pop tape, like kind of with like a bunch of Rolling Loud songs on it. Because I want to expand my base. I want to reach... Uh, the whole world. I don't want to just appeal to one target audience. Like I want to show my diversity. I want to show that I can cater to this crowd, that crowd, and that crowd. And then I'm going back to my signature Rose Boy. I'm dropping the other EP. It's like an eight song EP. I'm dropping a seven song EP and then an eight song EP. And the eight song EP is like a bunch of vibes. It's just like a bunch of, it's Rose Boy. Like it's that true authentic me as an artist. Like even Life of a Star is me, but it's showing my diversity. Like Bob's is me showing y'all like, look, this is how I came in the game. Like this is what you can expect from me at any time. You feel me? The other stuff is just kind of like more seasonal and me going out of my 
range to show you my diversity and my creativity as an artist. Beautiful, Rose Glory. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, just just coming and doing this interview with us. We are so excited for what you have in store. Like we said, Ro is going crazy. Y'all want to stream slide out and manifest a baby with us? Let's do Man, it. Manifest the baby. We gonna remember this. I'm telling you, July 20. Is it 25th? It's the 25th. I'm yes. June 25th. June 25th, we put it into the atmosphere together that the baby gonna hop on slide out. Now watch, we are gonna look back and we are gonna be like, it happened. Wait till this clip go viral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen. The baby on slide out. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Anything else you wanna say before we wrap? To your fans, um, where can everybody find you? Uh, Y'all can follow me on social media. Every social media platform is the same. R-O-S-E-B-O-Y, the number four T-H. Don't forget it. The number four T-H. Um, and just look forward to a lot, man. Like I said, I'm I'm going to deliver. You know, I'm not here for the moment. I'm here for a while. You know, I, I'm, I'm big on longevity. So just hold me to that. Like anybody listening to this, just hold me to that. For sure. Everybody that's watching this right now, thank you for tuning in to season two, episode two of HBCU Creators featuring Rose Boy Fourth. Definitely go stream Aggie all Pride. the Yes, Eggy Pride, two Aggies in the building. That's yeah. why I was so excited to do this interview. Um, mm -hmm. and make sure you follow Culture Fusion Agency on everything at Culture Fusion Agency. Check out Rose Boy and all his music, and we'll see y'all in the next episode. Be out with it. <laughs>